Okay, so we're gonna show that it is impossible to define a total ordering on C. So in other words, one cannot find a relationship, I'm gonna to refer to this relationship as bigger than, um, between complex numbers so that for any two complex numbers, Z and W, one and only one is true, that Z is bigger than W, W is bigger than Z, or the two must be equal to each other. The second axiom for a total ordering is that for all Z1, Z2, and Z3 in C, we know that the relation, if we have Z1 is bigger than Z2, that implies that Z1 plus Z3 is gonna be bigger than Z2 plus Z3. And then the last one for all uh, Z1, Z2, and Z3 in C, if we know that Z3 is bigger than zero, then if we have Z1 is bigger than Z2, that implies that Z1 times Z3 is bigger than Z2 times Z3. So the way I'm going to do this is first I'm going to define what a complex number is, okay? So a complex number, right, is equal to, so it's the set that has these elements that look like this, right, where A and B are real numbers, oh, and I is equal to the square root of negative one. So these are what real numbers look like. They're of the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers, and that i is equal to the square root of negative one. What we're also going to use in order to prove this is the fact that we know that uh, c, so the complex numbers with addition and multiplication, forms a field. So it is a field, okay? So we're gonna use four properties of a field in order to justify that this is not a total ordering. And most of you should already know these properties by heart from high school and stuff like that. So we know if this is a field, that means that for any uh, Z contained in the complex numbers, we know that Z plus its additive identity I mean, its additive inverse is equal to its additive identity, which is zero, right? And we know the additive identity plus um, any complex number would just be that complex number. We also know that uh, if we have negative times negative that complex number Z, we would just get Z. And we know that um, the multiplicative identity times any complex number just gives us that complex number. So these are the four um, things that I'm going to use in order to justify that C does not give a total ordering, right? Or there isn't a total ordering on C. So let's go ahead and start the uh, proof. So remember, for a total ordering, we must have um, all these three be satisfied, right? So I'm gonna first look at the law of trichotomy. That's what this first one is. So I, I or law of trichotomy. So I need to have, uh, I need to look at two complex numbers, any two complex numbers, right? Where um, they don't fit uh, these relationships, right? So I'm gonna be looking at the specific ones, uh, zero and I. So I'm gonna justify why zero and I are complex numbers. So zero is an element of the complex numbers because let's look at here. If I have, uh, if I make A zero and B zero, right? Then A, I mean zero plus zero times I is just zero. So it actually fits this description because A and B are real numbers and of course zero is a real number, right? So since I can have zero plus zero times I is equal to zero, that means zero falls in into the description of a complex number. Also, I know that I is a complex number because if I were to let A be zero and B be one, zero and one are both real numbers, right? That means zero plus one times I, well, one times I is just I, so I fits the description of a complex number. And remember, this must, these three must be satisfied for all complex numbers. So I'm gonna look at zero and I specifically. Now, um, right off the bat, I know that I cannot be zero, right? Because by the definition of a complex number, I is the square root of negative one. So right off the bat, I can take this one off. I know that uh, um, 
i cannot be equal to zero so i need to focus on these two right i just need to i need to find all three of these not be true right because for any two complex numbers one and only one is true right so i'm going to look at this next one here so i'm going to suppose that um let's see i is bigger than zero so by the third axiom right by the third axiom here since i is bigger than zero this means that i times i is bigger than a zero times i right and then of course uh ooh, well i know another one now right that i need from the field I know that zero times z is equal to uh, zero, right? This um, additive identity times uh, any complex number is the additive identity, right? So anyway, I, I do need that. I just realized that, right? So I know that i times i is um, i squared is bigger than, so zero times i is, of course, zero. And we know that i is defined as the square root of negative one. So that means i squared is negative one. So we have this um, relationship here. Negative one is bigger than zero, right? So remember, this is a relation, right? So it doesn't behave um, like we are used to. We can't just say, oh, since negative one is bigger than zero, that's our contradiction, right? We have to get that um, zero is bigger than i, right? So we still have some work to do. Well, I know that this implies that, um, let's see, i times negative one is bigger than um, i times zero. And this gives me negative i is bigger than zero, right? So now from the second axiom, right? I know that i plus negative i is bigger than i plus zero. And then this gives me, so any complex number plus its additive inverse gives me zero is bigger than i. And there is our contradiction, right? Because we suppose that i was bigger than zero and using the field, um, the properties of a field, I got that zero is bigger than i, but we assumed that i was bigger than zero, and this is a contradiction, right? So it must be the case that um, zero must be bigger than i, right? In order for this to be an ordered field, because we knew that zero was not bigger than, uh, I mean, that i was not bigger than zero. And we know that i is not equal to zero. So the only shot we have at this being a total ordering is that uh, zero is bigger than i, right? So let's go ahead and look at that. So suppose that, um, yeah, zero is bigger than i. So by two, right, this means that zero plus negative i is going to be bigger than um, i plus negative i. And of course, this implies that negative i is bigger than zero because i plus its additive inverse is zero. So now what we have, what we can do now is now that I know that negative i is bigger than zero, I know that negative i times negative i is bigger than uh, zero times uh, negative i, because I know that negative i is bigger than zero, right? I know that I can rewrite this as, um, let's see, negative times uh, negative z times z, right? And the closure property, right? z times z, oh, well, i times i is uh, closed under c, right? So i times i. So now this fits that description. So this is bigger than, so additive identity times um, that is zero. Now this is um, positive i squared 
is bigger than zero. Okay, now this means I squared is going to be negative one is bigger than zero, right? And by three again, I know that, uh, let's see, negative one times negative i, oh, negative one, not negative i, negative one times negative i is going to be bigger than uh, zero times negative i, right? Since I know that negative i is bigger than zero, right? Since I know negative i is bigger than zero, that's three. And then this implies, of course, I can do that again, um, I'm just going to say that um, i is bigger than 0. But look, but we assumed that um, we assumed that 0 was bigger than i. And this is a contradiction, right? So at least for complex numbers, it doesn't fit any of those, right? Um, I was not bigger than zero, zero was not bigger than I, and zero was not equal to I, right? So that means that it just fails this um, the definition of a total ordering. So if it fails the definition of a total ordering, that means it's not a total ordering, right? So let's go ahead and finish this. Thus, um, we have shown uh, that um, it is impossible um, to define a total ordering on C. And that was what we set out to do.